Today I'll be sharing with you a project that I've been working on for the past few months. But before I do that, I want to quickly explain what I'll be doing with this channel in the future. My plan is to expand this channel to do projects that are larger and more multidisciplinary under the new channel name Metalmancy. I chose this name because the unifying theme behind all of these projects will be metals and metalloids. Skills like welding is fusing metal together to form structure, while skills like electronics and programming give metal life and functionality. This is the new logo of the channel. Take a look at it and see if you can find some symbols that are in some way related to metal. The other important expansion to the channel is that I'm going to start including videos that feature the Rust programming language. Which brings me to my first Metalmancy project, which is the main topic of this video. For the past few months, I have been working on an arcade cabinet that will be loaded with games made with the Rust programming language by people in the Rust game development community. It will be on display and playable by attendees of RustConf in Portland, Oregon on August 5th. So where did the inspiration to do this project even come from? Well, back in 2016, I participated in a hackathon called Hack the North at the University of Waterloo, where our team built a pinball machine. Like with all hackathon projects, it was jerry-rigged and barely worked, but it was functional enough to be one of the 12 winners selected by the judges. Some notable things about the project is that it used Tesla coils as the bumpers, and we used these two giant capacitors to generate a current uh, large enough to actuate the solenoid flippers. Ever since then, I've wanted to build a more professional looking arcade machine, but I haven't had the time, resources, or skill set to do so until very recently. In 2021, I got a welding diploma. In the courses, we learned many different welding and cutting processes. These were the final skills that I needed to start building large projects like arcade machines. And since I have been getting more and more involved with the Rust game dev community, I thought it would be really cool to use my skills in metalworking, electronics, and programming to uplift game developers in the community by showing their games to a broader audience on a custom arcade cabinet. RustConf 2022 was coming up and it sounded like the perfect opportunity to share what the Rust game development community was doing to the broader Rust community. So I contacted one of the organizers for RustConf and presented my idea to them to see if they were open to it, and they were. So we worked out the details to make sure that the project would work and would fit at the event. Now I could get started designing. I used the Autodesk Fusion CAD software to design the parts for the arcade cabinet. All of the parts were laser cut from 18 gauge cold rolled steel. First, I designed the two sides of the cabinet. I made sure to include holes for ventilation and any other hardware that would need to be mounted to the sides of the cabinet, including fans, hinges, a latch, speakers, and arcade buttons. I also made a small cutout at the bottom of the right side where the I.O. ports of the motherboard can be accessed. For the bottom of the cabinet, I made another sheet metal part with some bends. The bottom has a bend on the front with a lip to screw the input panel into, and a bend on the back to attach the power supply to. It also has PCB mounting holes for the motherboard, input board, and amplifier board. I also included two holes on the front side to put two more arcade buttons. For the top of the cabinet, I made another bent sheet metal part. The bottom has another lip to attach the other side of the input panel, followed by a large rectangular hole and mounting holes for the monitor. The rest of the part bends to align with the sides of the cabinet. I also designed an input panel that has mounting holes for six arcade buttons and a joystick. The back door, which has mounting holes for hinges, a latch, and a doorknob, and a small door that can be lifted to reveal the I.O. ports of the motherboard. As I designed all the parts, I added them to one big assembly file to make sure that everything aligned. Next, I imported all of the large hardware parts, like the supports, hinges, knob, and latch, and I put them in place on the assembly. Next, I imported and placed every screw and nut needed to assemble the design. After meticulously checking and adjusting all of the parts, I exported a bill of materials from the assembly and placed the order for all of the hardware. At the same time, I placed an order for all of the electronics parts, including the wire, arcade buttons, joystick, amplifier board, input board, monitor, and speakers. Next, I needed to order my custom sheet metal parts. I ordered the parts from a local metal shop called Cormark. They were able to laser cut and bend my parts to the specified dimensions. In order to do this, I needed to provide them with DXF files for the laser cut parts and an additional drawing for each of the bent parts, specifying the bend radius and angle of each of the bends on the parts. 
I sent all of this to Cormark, got a quote, and then placed the order with them. I commissioned three pieces of art to cover the surfaces of the cabinet. Once they were complete, I sent the art along with reference drawings to a vinyl shop, and they made stickers to cover the whole surface of the cabinet. They were also able to apply the stickers to the cabinet for me. The whole time I was doing design work and waiting for parts to be made, I was also promoting a Google form that I made to Rust game developers. It collected information about them and their games. After contacting and working with the devs that responded, I was able to get eight working builds for the arcade cabinet before the conference. The arcade cabinet itself is just a Windows PC with built-in speakers, monitor, and gamepad. It uses an NVIDIA GTX 1080 graphics card and Ryzen 7 1700 processor and has 16 gigabytes of RAM. To get the arcade buttons and joystick to register as a game controller, I used an IPAC2 control interface board. It has screw terminals to connect arcade buttons for up to two controllers, and it can map them to Xbox controller inputs. This allows developers to handle inputs for an ordinary game controller, and the arcade will be able to read the inputs without any changes. However, due to the difference in layout between the arcade cabinet and an Xbox controller, some changes may still need to be made. As people responded to my Google form and update emails with their builds, I began testing them and providing feedback to the developers. This wasn't as difficult as I was expecting. The biggest challenge was making sure that the games weren't scaled wrong when running in full screen on the arcade's 5x4 monitor. But other than that, there weren't any difficulties and the developers were great to work with. Between when I was testing others' games, I worked on getting my own game, Theta Wave, to a playable state and compatible with the arcade. ThetaWave has been an on and off side project of mine for the past three years now, and I really wanted to get it to a playable state before RustConf. My plan for ThetaWave was to have it be a much deeper and more complex game, but that would take way too long to complete in time. So I decided I would branch the idea into something called ThetaWave Arcade, which would be a version of the game that is simpler to understand and play and more suitable to an arcade setting. In this version of the game, you play as a spaceship fighting through waves of enemies. Your goal is to prevent them from getting past you by destroying them in time. You have a defense bar and a health bar. If either of them deplete completely, you lose the game. The health bar goes down when your spaceship takes damage from enemy blasts or collisions, and the defense bar goes down when enemies get past you. Destroyed enemies will drop loot, which can heal your health or defense, as well as provide armor, which will block a single source of damage once, and green space rocks, which increase the fire rate of your weapon. If you survive through all of the waves of enemies, you win. In the process of creating an arcade build for my game, I also created a build that can run in browsers. You can play or download the game on the Itch page, which I've linked in the description of the video. The last thing I did was make a pamphlet to hand to in-person attendees of RustConf. It has information about the games and the developers that worked on them, as well as game engines that were used to make them. I want to do more projects like this one, especially ones where I can involve members of the community. If you'd like to be part of that community, make sure to join the Metalmancy Discord server and subscribe to this channel. And if you'd like to support me in doing expensive projects like the Rust Arcade, I recently set up a Patreon to accept donations. Tomorrow, we will begin our road trip from Minnesota to Oregon for RustConf. If you're attending, make sure to stop by the Rust Arcade and say hi.